Hello everybody, this is Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today is the day that I think many of you have been waiting for. Godot 3 is finally here. No more release candidates, no more betas, it is the full-blown version, Godot 3 is here. Uh, to those of you that are not uh, following Godot, it is an open-source 2D, 3D game engine, uh, probably the most... Um popular of the free options out there, uh, definitely becoming more and more of a pure to Unity and Unreal Engine with every day, and Godot 3 just jumps that bar up so much higher. This release brings so much functionality to the Godot engine. So without further ado, let's just jump in. Uh, now one thing to be aware of before we get too far in this, I am still working on my Godot 3 tutorial series now that it is finally here. You will start seeing those videos show up soon. I am also working on the book. You should start seeing more and more chapters on my Patreon soon. And hopefully I will have a link to share with you very, very shortly. So this is an exciting release for me as well. Um, Godot is a very... Um, important engine going forward. I think we're going to see its adoption has exploded in this last version, and I think it's only going to get more popular. Um, so what's new in Godot 3? Well, a lot, actually. Uh, the biggest one is definitely the new 3D renderer. Um, they've taken a... Um, if, if you look at what the insult were for Godot 2 and earlier, uh, the 3D was definitely part of that. Um, it was never really competitive to the other engines out there, and Godot 3 really brings it a long way forward in supporting uh, modern renderer. The new renderer has uh, global illumination going on, full um, uh, BSDF uh, rendering, uh, post-processing, uh, updated shader processing. Uh, the biggest thing probably is that it's got a full uh, PBR, or physically based rendering base workflow um, and it actually goes one step beyond that and implements oh what is it called uh, Disney's principled BSDF for physically based rendering uh, pretty much this is uh, PBR so you've got your normal instead of using you know um, uh, what were the norms before? A normal map, a uh, diffuse map, and a couple other maps. We switched it out instead. Now there is albedo, uh, metalness, ambient occlusion, roughness, but then it goes one step further now has rim anotropsy, uh, anotrops, and Anostropy, anostropy, sorry, I'm not going to say that correctly. Uh, subsurface scattering, clear coat, refraction, and transmission shading. Um, this is a very fancy way of saying that you can represent real world materials a whole lot better. And this definitely is the case. Now, materials are like one half of the equation for really good 3D. The other half is lighting. And there's another area where Godot 3 has really taken a jump forward is now it implements uh, global illumination, uh, which basically gives you a way of, um, you basically better lighting your scenes. I'm not going to get into too much more detail on that. Just know that the lighting model is a heck of a lot better. Now that new model also has uh, higher demands and if you're still creating for relatively low-end devices or mobile, um, there is support for uh, light maps as well. So on older hardware you can use the older light lighting method as well if you so wish. Uh, but there is a lot more functionality there in the, uh, the lighting side of things as well. Another area that's new on the 3D side of things is in materials and shaders section. Now one thing that's a bit of a negative with this particular release, and time will heal this, there is no physical, um, Godot 2.1 had a visual shader uh, graph maker, basically so you could create shaders visibly, uh, visually, can't do that right now, but that is going to come again in the future, but um, there is a, um, a very solid shader language in there, uh, on top of that we've also got uh, GPU particle supports, um, and again, across the board, the 3D renderer is just better. The results you can get out of it are much, much better. You can get, uh, but uh, again, I'm trying not to compare directly to Unity or Unreal, but you can really rival what you can generate out of those two engines now with the Godot 3D. And in all honesty, with Godot 2, you couldn't. The, the limitations were there. Now, there are other features and functionalities of the 3D renderer uh, that have also been added. There is now um, GPU particle systems, uh, basically so you can have a huge number of particles and they're basically rendered on the GPU and instead of in software. Um, GLTF support has been added. Now, GLTF is a, uh, I think it's the Kronos group, like, so the people behind OpenGL have created an intermediate format for sharing between devices. Right now, the choices we have are basically uh, Clada and FBX, and both kind of suck. 
Um, so let's hope that GLTF really does take off. And if you're going to invest in a pipeline for the future, do pick GLTF. Hopefully this is the new Langua Franca for communicating between graphics applications and game engines going forward. Um, now the initial support isn't quite as good as the Collada importer, but should improve in time. It is definitely a priority there. Um, but another thing they've done with this release is they've changed the importer. So before you used to go to like tools, import, uh, 3D, blah, 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 and then you bring in your model that way. Now you drag and drop. It's basically you drop it into your folder and it will automatically run the importer. If you need to change the settings that it was imported at, you go to the import tab and change the settings. So it's a much more uh, streamlined setup. And the nice thing is it actually just creates a, whole, a hidden folder in your project called .import. And what this allows you to do is literally copy that dot import and the assets from one project to another, and it just works. It won't automatically re-import them, and the settings are just there. So this should make it work better with source control, should make it work better with network drive, should make it work better on team environments, etc. Um, there's also F uh, SVG, or a scalable vector graphics support, has been added. This is a, uh, a file format for uh, vector graphics art. Uh, right now, it doesn't keep them as vectors in a Godot engine. It actually renders them down as bitmaps, but vector support is coming soon. Now on top of that, there is a lot of functionality beyond graphics uh, in this particular release. Another aspect of this release is GD Native. GD Native is one of those things, it's a plumbing thing. It's not something that you, you know, interact with right away, but it might actually be the single biggest change in Godot 3. And what it is is a, um, a plugin interface, essentially. It allows you to bind your code to Godot without having to recompile Godot. So if you have a C library that you want to integrate into Godot, you can use the GD native interface to, to link the two. It's a much faster and easier and cleaner way of extending the Godot engine uh, with modules on top of the way modules are done today. So right now Godot has module support, but basically this is the C++ um, code that you have to recompile into Godot. So you have to build your own version of Godot to make use of modules. GD Native is a different thing. Basically, it is an interface to DLLs or uh, shared objects or whatever it is based on your uh, platform of choice that allows you to you know, basically make extensions, but you won't have to rebuild Godot. So this is going to allow people to extend and for the community to really get behind and um, extend Godot in a way that's more uh, a la carte for people to choose from so we can extend it without having to rebuild it. So this could be a huge, huge change to it. So um, it's going to allow them to bring in external libraries a lot easier. So we're going to start seeing support for, you know, um, third party devices or uh, microtransactions or those kind of things all can easily be done using the GD native interface. So that's definitely a win there. Now, another big one, a huge one actually, uh, is that C Sharp support is now here. Uh, so it allows you a completely different option. Basically, you can program um, in uh, GD script, in uh, Visual script, and now you can actually choose to use C Sharp as your programming language of choice. Uh, you do need to have Mono installed, and do be aware when you download uh, Godot, um, you have to choose the Mono version, and again, Mono has to be installed. Another thing to be aware of is that there, what was I going with that? Uh, not sure where I was going with that. However, do, um, oh yeah, the uh, the case has changed in some cases. So um, C Sharp uses Camel case versus um, Snake case, which is used in GD script. So um, what that normally means is in um, GD script, it might say git underscore something function. Whereas in C Sharp, it will be git and then capitalized and then function. So it's just a different naming convention, but when they generated the um, the C-sharp bindings, they used the camel case approach. So it, it looks more natural to a C-sharp developer, but do be aware that your documentation is going to vary from GD script that way. Uh, but it's pretty much you can replace underscore letter with just capital letter. And that's really the only difference between the camel case and the snake case there. So it's not a huge, huge difference to going on. Um, there are some things missing in C-sharp right now, though, and the biggest one, hands down, is you can't actually use it in production. And that's kind of a big deal, but this is, I think, their number one priority for development. So in Godot 3.01, this should, in theory, be fixed. But what basically this means is you can't export your games that are developed using C-sharp yet. So they've got to create the templates for the various different platforms so that you can actually export a C-sharp game. So if you're looking to do a game and release it tomorrow in C-sharp, 
you're going to have to wait a little bit. So do be aware that that is definitely the one major downside there. Um, let's see. Uh, GD script got cleaned up. A lot of quality of use stuff. Documentation was improved a whole lot. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a completely new from scratch audio engine has been written. It has uh, no external dependencies. Uh, it is entirely based around audio streams. The old uh, sample stuff is completely removed. Um, so it's much simpler, uh, but it also has the bus base interface for doing uh, special effects in the boat. Uh, a dozen different special effects are built in, such as amplified delay, EQ, filter, high pass, low pass, uh, panning, uh, phasing, reverb, etc. Uh, so also has uh, 2D and 3D spatial audio support. Uh, so a nice new release there. Uh, VR support has been added. It's somewhat in its infancy. So um, the AR stuff is going to come in 3.1. Uh, it's implemented right now uh, using GD Native. So this is an idea of what GD Native enables us to do. Uh, but there's open VR support there now, and there's also cardboard VR support. So it's really exciting to see VR there. Um, another major change that they've had is the physics backend has been completely replaced with uh, bullet physics. Now, bullet physics is one of the industry standards for um, 3D physics, whereas Godot used to roll its own. Uh, the Godot um, home rolled system is still there as an option, uh, but in theory, the, the bullet system should be more mature, give you a better simulation, and give us more functionality going forward. Uh, it supports a whole lot more than what the built-in system did. So as they do new releases, the, the physics engine should gain a whole lot more functionality on that level. Uh, completely updated new uh, multiplayer API. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, the export system has also been greatly updated. Uh, IPv6 support has been added. WebAssembly and WebGL2 for HTML5 export has been added. Um, you can now theme the UI. Uh, so there's a light theme, a dark theme. You can create your own, etc. cetera. Um, in the world of 2D graphics, auto tiling for tile maps has been added. This allows it basically to algorithmically fill in spaces. So if, if you can define how your uh, corners work, it can automatically you know, fill in the, your map as you create it. I'll uh, I'll cover this in a little bit of detail later on. So it's a hard one to explain, but uh, it's a cool functionality for 2D map creators. Um, there's the vector-based dial box flat you know, allows you to create uh, really cool buttons very easily in a you know resolution independent manner. Uh, font improvements, hardware cursor, improved 3D editor viewport. Um, another thing that's been added and not added, uh, console support is still not there. Most of this comes down to legal re requirements. However, uh, Ariel Manzer, one of the original developers for Godot, uh, has a company, Lone Wolf Technologies, that is actually doing ports to various different platforms. So if you have a Godot game that you need to run on another platform, there is a company that can support you there and they've already got it up and running on a Switch. And then beyond that, uh, there's just a ton of little usability improvements, workflow improvements, uh, tweaks, uh, performance improvements, you name it. So uh, Godot 3, there's accumulation of a heck of a lot of work, but it is a really, really solid looking release. I'm pretty excited by this one. And as I said, we are going to see um, more and more um, documentation coming out soon. Uh, you can hear from me, you're going to have uh, my tutorials and book coming soon, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, but I hope you're excited by this release. I certainly am. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Again, stay tuned for the channel. You'll see a lot more Godot in the coming days. Let me know what you think of this release. Are you excited by it? Are you meh? Uh, do let me know in the comments down below. And I will talk to you all soon. See you later. Goodbye.